welcome back to U-Boat. My name is Tobo. We've just successfully done our first mission inside of our uh, patrol sector of uh, Charlie Gulf. We've sunk two enemy transports, one on accident, <laughs> one on purpose, and we're moving slowly away from the scene of the crime, I mean the, uh, the uh, successful raid upon the enemy. So I'm going to get out of the zone, and the alarm is going to kind of go off, and then at that point our crew will be able to get a little bit of rest and recovery. Uh, you can see here that our compressed air reserves are low, and that happens when you surface. They actually are filling these kind of air bladders or, or these tanks on the side of your ship with um, with air as opposed to letting in water. It's pushing that water inside the tank out, your ballast tank, and that's how your ship will raise or lower or sink or, uh, sink or surface. So what we need to do is uh, load more air into the, uh, into the tank. So we're going to go activate the diesel compressor. What are you doing back here, David Peters? Oh, David Peters decided to take a nap while on duty. Jesus, you can execute them? <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, we're going to have him clean the toilets, I suppose. I don't know. I guess just a warning. A Kriegsmarine sailor will always be alert. Very well. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and yell at this guy, apparently. This time you're off the hook. I mean, that's fair. We just wound up having a mat. I hope he wasn't sleeping through the attack, but whatever. We'll uh, give him the benefit of the doubt. So we're going to turn on the very loud diesel compressor. It does give you extra noise. So if you are underwater... Uh, or what have you. If you're trying to be silent, you really don't want to use that option. Meanwhile, this guy is going to go back and activate, or sorry, are you heating up torpedoes? You are. I don't really need you to be doing that, to be honest. Let's go ahead and have you on the diesel engines for a bit. Oh, that's why I had two people assigned to him. We'll take somebody off of Newman here. We'll take somebody off of Kohler, and then Groff is on the, uh, the navigation station. So we're rocking it. Let's go ahead and speed back up. You will go a little bit slower whenever you're in. I think it's just the range of the ship itself. Once you're out of their detectable range, you go back into your time compression mode. So it just takes a little bit of uh, of time to get going here. I love how pretty this looks. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Really pretty view. Even when you're underwater sometimes in shallow water when it's really bright outside, it's very, very pretty as well. If you're trying to crawl inside of enemy territory or something like that. All right, they've turned off the air compressor automatically. Our air reserves are full. You no longer see the warning. They're just basically working properly. Um, we are still relatively close, I think. Yeah, we're not quite out of the woods yet. Let's go up to flank speed. I kind of forgot about increasing the speed away from them. We might have to be outside of the circle. Let's see. Any minute now. There we go. And we immediately went into travel mode. All right, so we are outside of that mission. I think... Why don't we... Why don't we just cruise up the coast of Spain? I'm a little bummed because I I really thought that the hydro uh, hydrophone officer was going to be able to find contacts. Like you used to be able to hear a lot of what was going on, and I don't hear that anymore. I'm not hearing enemy shipping far far away. What if we go down to periscope depth? Let's see. Let's go out here, a little bit off the coast, a couple hundred kilometers off the coast of southwest Spain, and we're gonna go down a bit to maybe I don't know. Just periscope depth will be fine. Let's go underwater. God, it takes you so long to actually submerge. It's crazy. Okay, so we're completely underwater now. So we, in theory, let's go down to about 50 meters. Fünfzig meters, please. All right, so, yeah, I, don't, I still don't hear anything. Let's stop the ship completely. So, no matter what, it seems like we no longer hear anything with the radio men. And I don't know if that was a bug that was corrected or it's now a new bug that's been introduced in this build, which is kind of funny. But it used to you used to get propeller noise from far, far away. And to be fair, propeller noise is when you're like, if you're underwater, you can hear propellers from really, really far away. And um, it's it's the way sound travels underwater is absolutely nuts. When I used to go scuba diving off the coast of the Atlantic, we were relatively close to the shipping lanes. And like by relatively, I mean, I think, oh, you know what? I can freaking look at it on the map. We used to scuba dive out of the Outer Banks here on the coast of North Carolina. So this strip of land uh, right around here. And we would be on a wreck that might have been, you know, a couple a couple miles offshore. And the shipping lanes might have been, you know, really far out. But you'd hear that noise and it almost sounds like they're right on top of your head. Uh, so it, it's very, very deafening, which is really super fun. Fun with air quotes, you know what I mean? All right. Well, we're not hearing anything under here. The crew's getting a bit antsy. We're lowing, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of going down on oxygen. So we'll come back and uh, let's go ahead and deck a wash. We'll go back to full speed. We're just going to randomly patrol, I suppose. That's all we can do right now. I don't know if it's, an, like I mentioned, I don't know if it's a bug or a feature. 
But uh, we don't really have too much in terms of what we're able to find, so we're just going to cruise along in life. I might actually just surface since it is nighttime. I want to speed things up a bit until we are able to either finish our mission or find another group. We have received a new transmission from headquarters, so it looks like it might be another one of those, hey, go do a mission for us kind of a thing. And honestly, since we don't have too much going on right now, we may want to just grab it and see what they want us to do. This is a... One of our ships has gone missing. Its last known coordinates are here on the map. So we're going to go help out a fellow U-boat crew. Um, so let's make all haste towards our ally. We'll change course onward and upward. Is everyone doing okay on sleep? I think so. Kohler's feeling pretty good. Loris is pretty tired. I wouldn't mind giving the navigator a bit of a break. So, or sorry, the radio man a bit of a break. I do enjoy having mostly two of every kind of class of officer on the ship because you're able to really do more shift work. You're, you're, you're more able to, um, you know, send them whatever they... Why, why are you walking away from the engine over here, Mr. West? Did you just go grab some food at random? Uh, you're able to kind of, you know, put one of the officers down for rest while the other one will stay active doing their job. The problem is that when Newman stops working, no one else is there to help man the radios. We could have somebody else do it from one of the other officer classes. However, I'm pretty sure they do it at a less effective rate. All right, let's go ahead and have somebody go up on deck. Go ahead and do the targeting scope. The targeting site, rather, is up on top of the ship. So you'll see the captain come up here in just a minute. Or He's already up there. That was pretty quick. He's already up on top. We'll give him a couple crewmen to... It's really weird. You'll see crewmen actually on the surface. But by dedicating two additional crew, I think you're just you're supplementing that amount of people doing the lookout. So there will always be some AI crew during uh, doing certain jobs. So it's, if you don't have, say one of your officers doing the observation job, somebody will be keeping a lookout, but they not might not spot something as early as if they would have had support from an officer. All right, we're going to speed things up a bit. We're a little bit close. It's just, it's going to be a U-boat. Sometimes there's some, some surprises to be found. Uh, so we might, for example, have, right after we, you know, deal with whatever this emergency is, we might have an enemy come flowing in here and trying to kill us. So always keep an eye out for that flowing in here did that, that was that was that the descriptor <laughs> i think so let's speed back up until we're pretty much right next to the ship there we go we can see the other u-boat it's just kind of hanging out on the surface of the water and as we get closer we're going to get a new option to perform a mission on it there we go so let's go ahead and come to a complete stop and i'm going to select one of my engineers here mr loris we're going to right click on the type uh, 7c and tell him to investigate. U1023 is floating on the water's surface without any living soul on the deck. Inspection from our boat makes it clear that it sustained major damage. We're going to go ahead and say, go on board. So this guy is going to get on his little dinghy and speed over there. I love how he like, if you speed up the game, <laughs> they start doing some crazy Tokyo Drift stuff in the boat. It's adorable. All right, we're going to hold fast here for a minute. Why don't we go ahead and put Mr... Uh, Newman here on the hydrophone just to keep it. Not that it seems to work right now, but we'll put him on there anyways because it would make sense. What was this? U U1 U1023. I'm wondering if this is actually part of a historical thing or not. Now U96, from what I've done my research on, U96 has was a very successful U-boat. It actually had, was it like 12 or 14 patrols? And it never lost a single crew member during the entire time it was operational. It sunk quite a bit of tonnage, and it never was uh, hurt until basically it wound up getting bombed in port. So it was it was bombed in port by some kind of a naval bomber uh, or something like that. It sank one ship and damaged uh, more than uh, more than one for another one rather for a total of seventy six thousand seventy six hundred gross tonnage. So there it looks like there's no incident, as far as I can tell. That um, she was hit by anything so curious to see I, don't, I, I figured they might have take you know take some things from history some things they might just make up so we'll grab loris here he's got a little quest icon over his head he reported that he could not hear any sounds when he went inside uh the ship was damaged by a mine which led to flooding of the batteries and then the batteries choked the crew so we're going to say we want to mine the ship uh to do this you must have an engineer so explosive charges will explode after a few minutes sinking the vessel so we're going to have him mine the ship and eventually, Leo will come back to us.
Okay, we and here we go. In fact, we do see chimney smoke now all of a sudden off in the distance. So this is probably some kind of a patrol related to our storyline. And in fact, we might take an aggressive stance. We don't really appreciate people trying to sneak up on us. So maybe we will uh, ambush whoever's coming after us. We do have to wait for Mr. Loris to come back on board. <laughs> this crazy Tokyo Drift. He's back on board. The other U-boat is starting to sink. There she goes down to the bottom of the sea. And we are going to go investigate this uh, chimney smoke here. It's probably going to be a frigate. Or sorry, a corvette. I think corvettes are relatively small. It is steaming right towards us, though. Let's go ahead and do some shift changes. I'm going to send Hilbert down for a sleep. Uh, we're going to keep the captain on board for the um, for sighting. I will go ahead and put us into deck awash. That way we're able to... It's very bright outside. So if there's another enemy ship here, especially like a destroyer or a frigate or, or a corvette, well, we want to make sure we're as, uh, you know, invisible as possible. So by going to deck awash, we're going to be about half as visible. But I think we still have a pretty large sight radius, though. All right, there we go for that. Captain's going to go down onto the periscope. Let's put uh, Mr. Newman onto the hydrophone. Give him a crew member as well to help out with that. I mean, I guess, I suppose there's really no reason other than just oxygen. Let's go ahead and go down to periscope depth. There's no reason to go, um, to not be in periscope depth at this point. Let's also switch over to electrics because we are burning through some fuel. Not like we have any kind of a problem. We actually already completed our mission, almost. We're, oh, sorry, the marker's hard to read. There is like a bar here you're trying to fill up. I kind of thought the bar was already full, but it's not. All right, we've got a ways to go for our mission still. Uh, you have just warmed up torpedoes. Let's actually have Felix West go down for some sleep. We'll give Leo Loris the job of actually managing the dive planes. I don't think we're going to need to go to flank speed any moment right now. Captain's a little bit tired, so as soon as Kohler is recovered, we're going to swap him out for the captain. In fact, we did in fact see a uh, enemy vessel here, so we've gone into the alarm state automatically. As far as I know, there's no way to manually trigger the alarm. It's pretty much just a automatic type of thing. So the vessel is so friggin' far away. I think that's it way, way out there. Let's zoom in by eight. Bring the periscope down a bit. We're looking at nothing. Ah, there she is. Okay, so... This is, let's pull up our identification book. We kind of cheated, I think, and it saw that it was um, already... Did it tell us what it was, or just say the destroyer? Oh, it just says it's a Corvette. Okay, we actually don't know what it is. So, it does seem to have a single... Two masts here, and it looks like it has one steam pipe, or one one central mat... Um, uh, what do you call that? Pipe? Steam pipe? Vent? Who knows? Not an F-class. I'm going to skip through all of the civilian type of vessels... Um, flower class only looks like it has one mast. There we go. This looks much, much closer. The Isles class, uh, Corvette has two masts here, a single pipe, and the central command tower, along with some different things on the side of the ship. So I think this is our baby here. So it's just a little, uh, Corvette. I think I'd like to be a bit aggressive. I think, for the good of all, we're going to come try to intercept this, this bad boy. Let's switch, um... Leo over to the electrics, because I want to give him a crew member so we can open up all five uh, speeds. This ship is currently moving. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a course here. I don't know if he's investigating or if he's just going at a random course at all. We'll be able to find out once we get a another point after a while. He is a lot faster than we are. We might have a little bit of trouble catching up to him. You know, I don't honestly know the maximum range of our torpedoes either. That's probably some information I should have at some point, huh? Okay, the captain's really tired. Let's put him down to sleep. We'll switch him out with Hilbert Kohler, which is going that should give us... Yeah, look at that sight range improve because the captain was so friggin' tired, he actually couldn't give um, really good information. So let's mark uh, another mark here. This dude is just steaming along. The course, according to these two points, is going to be this, which looks like it's at about uh, 160. And we can find this information out by putting a marker down on the line of latitude. Uh, and we can, or longitude. I always get my lines mixed up. And I'm a geography major, which is really, really bad. All right, we're going to put a... Actually, I think I need to do it the reverse way. Let's. Can I cancel this? I need to do it, I thought, like this. Here's the intersection. Uh, this is 13 degrees off of, I think, uh, 180. So they should be at a course of 177 
is the enemy's course, I believe. Now let's let's just let the let's let the AI do the calculations. We're gonna assign both Hilbert Kohler and Adam Newman to uh, building up their confidence on this target. I think it's gonna be 177. Let's see what the final numbers are once their confidence level goes up a bit. He's still steaming along the same way. We are somewhat audible, right? Remember, we've got a gyro compass. We're cavitating. Cavitation is when you create bubbles behind your ship from going really, really fast. So because they're they're spinning so quickly, they're creating pockets of air, and that those bubbles popping is the sound of it's called, called cavitating basically. So it's a sound that submarines can make, and uh, we don't want or any propeller uh, vehicle, sorry, can make that. So as we get closer, I am going to reduce some of our sounds. We're also using the gyro compass, which makes noise, the steering engines, and the electric engine. So quite a few things here are making a bit of noise. So now we're at a confidence level of 75. The course keeps shifting. So I think once we get a little bit closer, or sorry, the number gets a little bit higher, we'll have a more refined course. Okay, 168. You know what? Math is hard. That would make sense. If they're 13 degrees off, that would have been about 167. So the estimation was right. My math was just poor. <laughs> That's all the problem was. Uh, they think we're about four kilometers or uh, sorry, we're about two kilometers away. They're going only four kilometers an hour, which is good for us. They're speeding up and slowing down. Okay, we now have a hundred percent accuracy on the calculation, though, so I think that's going to be a good thing. I'm a little worried about popping off my torpedoes early because I'm fairly sure the enemy is going to see the torpedoes on the surface and react to that. So let's cancel out some of my lines here that are in the way we're going to try to do a little bit more stealth as we approach the vessel so let's see we got a bunch of stuff going on here first off step one i want west to go into uh let's go set on red light no sorry blue lighting that turns us on to silent running second we're going to go ahead and have newman go to bed <laughs> he's too damn tired Let's have Kohler, since he's right here in... Oh, you know what? He's actually a little bit higher. Let's have Graf go turn off the gyro compass. That's going to reduce some noise as well. We're also going to get an engineer and have them change the depth steer station to manual steering. That's going to remove the sound of steering engines. So hopefully that's going to reduce the uh, noise we're making quite a bit. There we go. So a lot of our noise has been reduced. We're still, we're still cavitating because we're still kind of charging forward. We're a little bit behind the enemy right now. But they don't, they don't have any kind of a chance yet to detect us, so that's a good sign. I'll tell you what, we're going to wind up doing this attack based on sound, probably, as opposed to a, a periscope. Because they can see a periscope really easy the closer we get. So, I don't know, we're actually really close. Do we want to do that or no? We're only one kilometer away. Let's go ahead and try a periscope-based attack. We're going to zoom out. We're going to keep the automatic calculations from the crew. Uh, we don't... Ah, oh crap. We don't have any torpedoes warmed up. Let's have our chief engineer warm up tube, uh, tube one. Can I have you warm up tube two in the bow torpedo room? Here we go. We're going to slow down because both of the engineers are now stepped away from the engine. They're going to be warming up these torpedoes so that when you warm up a torpedo, it reduces the chance that the torpedo is a dud. That's why we do that. Waiting for these bad boys to be finished. Getting closer and closer. The target is a bit narrowing, which is not great. I don't like to have a, a, a more of a narrow profile. All right, tube one has been preheated. Tube two is preheated. Let's go ahead and launch one at a time. I should have just fired that one as soon as I could. That way, maybe we can react to this guy's reaction itself and see if we can't counter his move. All right, tube one is loaded. Let's go ahead and open fire. Let's also preemptively load tube two. Sorry, um, flood tube two. Is somebody taking care of the reload? You are. Let's assign you two crew members here. 40 seconds to impact, and we'll take down the torpedo panel here. Let's speed up just a bit, give you one more crew member to go up to flank speed. We're still undetected so far. 20 seconds until impact. I don't know if they've seen us yet. They don't seem to be making any sudden moves. It's just that we have a very narrow window. Um, a, a very narrow side of the ship to hit. This might... Oh, holy crap! <laughs> what a great shot. Minimal damage. It was like blasted out of the water. Alright, let's follow up. If it was minimal damage, we're going to go ahead and lock on target. It's going to adjust the speed a little bit. 
I don't think they're still at 10 kilometers per hour, are they? I want to say that they're probably slowed down a bit. Let's go ahead and fire this torpedo. We're really, really close. So that should help us out a bit. They still don't detect us right now. Minimal damage. The thing was blasted into space. Where's my... I think I can pull up... What am I trying to think about doing? I wanted to pull up my calculation for the target. I guess we're okay. 20 seconds until impact. We're getting more of a flush target here, which is nice. I guess they're still going to be staying the same speed. We didn't destroy the propellers or anything. 10 seconds until impact. Let's see how this one turns out. Is this a miss? What the hell? No, 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 no. Pause the game. What happened here? What the hell? There she is. I don't know why the camera just flipped up. Okay. It's a miss. So I don't know if we, you know, screwed up our calculations. We were turning though. Maybe that's part of the issue. I think I was turning the ship. That's probably my own fault. Can I get somebody to warm up one of the torpedoes again? I still don't want to surface. That's still, um, you know, a, a vessel with teeth. So I don't want to surface right into it. Let's slow down though. We don't need to be going this fast on our approach. So let's slow down. You can see here we're starting to get some surface detection. So there is a chance that they're going to see us pretty soon. We're getting really, really close. I might have to go ahead and, uh, and fire a torpedo without it being warmed up. That just increases the chance that it's a dud. I'm going to flood tube two, and I'll fire if they wind up detecting us. I think it's just a, ba a distance thing. We're 4% visible, though, with our periscope the way it is. They might actually be, be hearing us right now. Why don't we actually just do this? Let's go completely silent by turning off the engine. Just completely go to zero. Maybe that's going to help out with our sound detection. I think they're actually picking us up by sonar. All right, we're flooded. Let's fire. 50% chance to detect us right now. 20 seconds until impact. We might have to dive down here if we don't hit him with this torpedo. You can actually see this lock is our torpedo underwater. Can I see the torpedo underwater? I can't. Okay, fair enough. That's part of the ship that we were looking at. Oh, it is our periscope. As soon as we lowered our periscope down, they no longer had a visual on us. So it's the fact that the periscope is like, a t it's 3% visible. But that's what they're seeing. Please don't miss with another one. That's going to be a huge bummer if we do. I think we might have. They might have completed their turn. Dang, I hate missing with torpedoes. It's like It feels like such a waste. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, hard, they're hardcore turning. They're basically making a complete loop. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to lower the periscope down. And once the periscope's down, they might not be able to see us. Let's get Newman back on the hydrophone. Let's let the captain completely rest. We'll let both of these guys rest at the moment. 30% chance to hit us. So they can't really see us right now. Oh shit, we are detected. Nope, we did get detected. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to dive because they're going to start dropping depth charges. So we're going to dive. They actually just tried to shoot at us. That was a shot. That you saw on the water. So if we come out of this view here, we might be able to see um, some attacks on our ship. We're, not, we're actually starting to sink, so we're doing a little bit better. We're under the guns now. We're under the guns' uh, damage radius, rather. So we are currently going down on purpose. What I'm going to do is run to the storage unit. I'm going to grab this uh, sonar decoy, one of these. Okay. Okay. We're going to run to the back of the ship. We're going to eject this sonar uh, decoy thing out of the pill thrower. So what that has done is it's basically has dropped off a sonar buoy at our position. We're going to go silent. We're going to actually move. Oh, crap. I wasn't even moving at all. That's awkward. We've just sunk straight down. So let's start trying to move away a little bit. Let's go ahead and do electrics on to three. I have dropped that sonar buoy off. We've got a 6% chance to be heard right now. We're really reduced because of the sonar buoy. So what I'm trying to do is go down and get away from the sonar buoy. I'm going to go down to about 100 meters, just be below kind of the... I don't know if this is the danger zone, or if this is just the um, the zone where people have trouble detecting you. There's there is something called the thermocline. It's a difference in temperature layers. So the deeper you go, you'll hit this weird spot where the temperature below a certain depth is much colder than the temperature above it, and it creates a, a weird acoustic barrier. So there's some more useless knowledge for you today. Uh, all right, so the boat is turning around. 
Still dangerous, though. Our crew morale is really dropping. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the amount of crew who are being, I guess, working with the officers so we can slow down this um, crashing crew discipline. It's not the worst thing in the world. I think the sailor just might break and have, like, a mental breakdown, and all you have to do is click on them a few times to say, it's okay, stop being a baby, you'll be fine. I don't like how low our oxygen is, though. We're already at 50% oxygen left. Now, we can run the ventilators to increase our oxygen. I'm going to speed things up just a bit. You can see that, uh, that Corvette, it's narrowing right over the sonar decoy. So I bet we might see here in just a moment, we might see some depth charges going up. Yep, sure enough. It's right over the sonar decoy, and it thinks that this sonar decoy is us. So it's going to be dropping the sonar decoys, or the, the depth charges on the sonar decoy. When the depth charges explode, I'm going to go ahead and go up to flank speed. I would if anyone was working the engines. I'll give you one crew member. Okay, the depth charges are going off. When the depth charges are active, you have a few moments of, I think, uh, sonar immunity. Because it screws up sonar and also sound. So we're going to speed things up. Try to get off his ba his path here for just a minute. Now he's busy, like, blasting away at where we used to be. God, I almost want to come around and freaking smack him in the face. Let's go ahead and go to a full stop. I don't think he spots us anymore. He's going on his own course. Yeah, you can see he's actually turning really hard to get back onto um, where the sonar decoy is. We can use that information and understand that he's going to be doing a loop, in theory. So why don't we try to come back? I'm going to come back up to periscope depth. Do we still have a good lock on him? We do. We just have to wait until he gets straighter. We have to wait until the ship... Oh! Is he making a straight escape? Was it one attack and that's it? What course is he on right now? He's on a course of 316. Let's see if this changes much. He's actually on a straight course right now. Are we on a straight course too? Or are we still making our turn? I wish there was kind of a bearing indicator. That's pretty much the only thing you've got. This is telling you where you're you're currently looking at. Oh, we're completely stopped. So we're not making any course corrections. We're going to be in a stern chase, and I don't like that kind of a shot. If this guy keeps his course exactly the way it is, then we'll hit him with the torpedo. However... If he changes at all, we're going to miss the shot. Are we back up to the surface here? We are at a depth of 8 meters. Let's go ahead and raise up the periscope. Let's get Hilbert Kohler on the attack periscope real quick. Let's go ahead and raise it up. He's walking to it, walking to it. There it goes. Um, so we've sighted the Corvette. We've lost all of our targeting information on it, though, which is rather annoying. So we're going to have to rebuild that targeting profile. I don't know why he can't do his target on it. Why are we not able to target this, you guys? I mean, he's he's well within our range. Super weird. What if I target him through here? I mean, I guess we're building up the profile on him anyways, but he's about out of range, and I don't think we're going to get the shot off. That's fine. Let's just say that it was a success. We've poked the British Navy a little bit in the face. We punched them in the nose. And we were able to escape uh, from their clutches. So we'll go ahead and say, Adam Newman, go ahead and go back to sleep. We'll keep Hilbert Kohler on the um, the periscope. We are running a little bit low on oxygen. But as soon as we break away completely from these guys, we will be in a better spot. Captain, I want you to go on to navigation once we wake you up. Come on, buddy. Come on. Get up. We're going to turn the gyro compass back on so we have uh, a bonus to navigation again. Do -do -do -do. We'll turn everything pretty much back the way it was. Back on the gyro, uh, gyro compass, let's grab our engineer. Wake him up as well. I can't wait to see if they're going to be adding different styles of submarines, like the later versions of submarines. Um, you know, I, I would love to see a Cold War era modification to this game. That would be so, so freaking cool. Let's go ahead and turn manual or electric steering back on. So that should be helping our crew not have to fight so much. We're still undetectable right now, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that we'll be okay. He's steaming out of the area, and we're going to get out of his sight, then we'll go ahead and surface. We're really low on oxygen, but I think we're going to be just fine, because all we have to do now is come up to deck awash. So you'll see us breach through here, and then we're going to be getting, uh, we'll be refilling our oxygen tank. 
as whenever it kind of gets enough of the um, the command central here or the command center here to come up uh, above the water line, it'll start pulling in oxygen. Conning tower. Sorry, I don't know why I say command center. This this is the conning tower. That's the bridge. Um, this is, I guess, the command center itself. I don't know what this section of the ship is called. If you guys know, let me know. Cool. Uh, by the way, there's, there is water running below everything, and that's normal for a ship. You will see uh, water collected below in the bilge area. And this is just general water that might come in from, you know, a leaking periscope. You might see it come in from... Uh, if you've got the hatch open on accident and it's raining or something like that, you'll see water leaking in occasionally. And that's pretty normal for ship activities. All right. Felix, go to sleep. I want someone to switch us over to diesels for a bit. And therefore, I want someone on the diesel engine, Mr. Leo Loris. We'll get someone assigned to you to reduce the fuel usage. Captain's going to go back. Wait a minute. Why can't I navigate? Why is no one navigating right now? Oh, is it considered to all be underwater? Sometimes if there's too much water in one of the compartments... You can't do anything inside of the compartment. Compartment is flooded. So there's a little bit of water inside of our command, uh, our central area here. So I can use this pump to kind of dump the water out. And there we go. That was enough. Uh, all we had to do is run it for like a split second and it was fine. Let's go ahead and give Newman an order to turn off said pump. We don't need to run it forever. It was just a little bit of water collected, I think, after... The periscope had been running for a while and everything else. That was a little silly that we can't use the navigator's table, though, when the compartment is, like, it's not even ankle deep. It was below the level of the deck. So, I don't know. A little bit strange. Incoming transmission from headquarters. They're going to give us another lovely mission. So, we'll see what the uh, Kriegsmarine has for us today. I think the German command for Navy was, like, Untersee is a really, really long BDU, right? It's BDU is the abbreviation for it. Uh, we have information about another ship that must be sunk at all costs. Cool. Well, I can't find a ship worth a ship say in my life. So uh, we are going to... Ooh, we're going to intercept this small convoy, 6 to 13 ships. I'm going to put a marker here so I can get a rough estimate of their position. And we're going to go to flank speed and try to avoid Mr. Warship here. We'll just kind of go over towards the target for the moment. We'll go ahead and do a full surface. So we can pick up a little bit of speed. I think we're out of the range of the warship. Just about. Almost. Not quite. Uh, Mr. West, I want you to turn on the diesel compressor so we can start putting air back in those tanks. So if we need to surface again later on, we'll have plenty of air to do it with. Kohler, I'm going to give you someone to help out. Uh, Mr. Newman, why don't we play a little bit of radio? That will keep the crew a little bit happy. Oh, we can't because we're on alarm, right? Yep, we can't do that because we're on the alarm status. What about our galley? Are we still mixing our food here? Oh, crap. Man, we went through food fast. They're changing the, the value or the uh, the consumption rate of food, it looks like, which is fine. Nothing th nothing to say that's wrong. I just keep getting surprised by, like, we're not having any food left. So you do have to, you know, there's a limited amount of time you can stay on board or out in, on a patrol. All right, he's going to be transferring some food, some exotic fruits over there so we can keep that bonus. At this point, we're just waiting to get outside of this warship's range, and then we're going to be able to go back to time compression, and we'll be out of the alarm. I wish we could manually... Like, I kind of wish there was a way to manually go out of alarm, and... Oh, he, actually, we are now. You can see that all the crew is super, super happy. So, too much work from officers, but we're getting varied dishes, and... You can turn on the radio, La, uh, La Roche, Is it La Roche? La Rochelle? It's a, that's the French city that we actually left. The French port up here. It's a pretty good radio signal. Let's go to tune into Gibraltar. Uh, those Brits and their beautiful music. All right. So we'll put uh, Mr. Kohler down for a bit of a nap. We'll have Klaus come on to the navigator's table. And the convoy looks like it's heading right for England. So let's make another marker here. And we're going to go ahead and just use the automatic uh, intercept. So we'll intercept them at this point if we maintain flank speed. All right. I think that is a good time to put a cut in here. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode of U-Boat. We look forward to continuing. I look forward to continuing the Let's Play of our campaign as soon as uh, we get back together again. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video with me. And until next time, my friends, take care.